Okay, everyone, welcome back to another session of EL-164. This time we're talking about Chapter 4, Fundamentals of Logic. Woo -woo. Some basic fundamentals of logic. So what we're looking at here is some uh, relay schematic on the left. In the center, we're looking at a ladder logic diagram. And at the right, a gate logic. Now, I, I don't know if all of you have taken any digital yet at this point, or this is um, maybe before you've taken any digital, but this is what they call an AND gate. So we've got, uh, uh, looking at the left, um, we'd have a hardwired, this would be uh, electrical, say uh, 24 volts here, uh, going to a terminal and limit switch, coming out of another terminal and limit switch, going to the next terminal and limit switch, out of the terminal switch, out of the terminal on the second limit switch, to a solenoid valve, out of the solenoid valve to like zero volts DC. When we close both these uh, switches, the solenoid turns on. In the case here in the center, we have what we call a ladder logic or a ladder logic program. Uh, here, what we're looking for is this input to turn on, this input to turn on, and then that output would turn on. And the last piece of this is A turns on and B turns on, Y turns on, the output turns on. So when, only when A and B are on can the output turn on. A binary concept. So uh, binary states, one or zero. As I mentioned before, we have uh, either on or off state. That's all we're looking for for a binary reference. Uh, when, I, when I say discrete, they're always referring to binary, either on or off. Difference between binary and analog is analog can read anywhere between, say, 0 and 10. Uh, binary can only read 0 or 1. AND gate, here's an example of an AND gate where, like, you have a light switch and a high beam. Uh, when you're uh, when you have a light switch on and you select the high beam input when both of those are on the high beam light turns on When the high beam light switch is off then the high beam light turns off and you're at low beam So just an example of, of an and The or statement is like a passenger door switch. These are this is a good example. So uh, so if you have a passenger door switch and a driver door switch so if either one of those open up the dome light turns on so um, so either a or b turns on the light turns on so think of it that way uh, and or and not functions 4.2 so here's what they call a truth table this little guy here in the center they call his truth table you'll see this very very uh, often in uh, the digital world, uh, what you see here is a, a binary sequence, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. In a decimal equivalent, that would be 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, that's what that's, it would be the equivalent to decimal in that same scenario. Uh, what, they're, what they do essentially is evaluate by, by doing this, you got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So evaluating the output with each one of these states. So if A here is equal to zero and B here is equal to zero, the output is going to be zero. So, so if A is equal to zero, B is equal to one, the output is zero. When A is equal to one, B is equal to zero, the output is zero. And finally, when A and B are both on, then the output does turn on. That's what they're trying to get to there. And here's some more functions of that same thing. So you see in the same thing, you got uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And finally, to get the 1, 1, that you actually have the output turn. It's the same, same thing as having this circuit here. A and B have to be on in order to turn the light on. And it's, it's represented by the logic point there, as you can see as well in the truth table. In the OR gate, we've got A or B and an output. So again, same truth table, you see 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. In a decimal format, it'd be 0, 1, 2, 3. When I see A and B off, the output is off. When I see A off, B on, the output is on. 
when I see A on B off, A on B off, the output is on. When I see A or B on, A or B on, the output is on. So as you can see, uh, we have more states of on here. And then here's another better illustration of it, yeah, showing all these OR gates with the truth table in place. And when you're thinking OR functions, you remember on AND we had two switches in series with each other? Now look what we got. We got two switches in parallel with each other. So with this switch or this switch turns on, the light turns on. That's a good way to look at it. The NOT function is fairly straightforward. Uh, input is flipped to create the output. So if it's on at the input, it's off in the output. If it's off on the input, it's on on the input. So that two tables, really simple. Again, uh, just an inversion of the uh, of the input. And here they're showing an example of that with a normally closed push button. So if you have a normally closed push button, when it's not pressed, the light is on. When it is pressed, the light is off. So it's inverted from the input. Uh, the uh, symbol for the uh, not symbol is the, the triangle with a dot in it. And quite often you'll see that same dot in, in signals like when you have when they put a combine a uh, a not and an and or a not and an or into one into one command. But uh, this truly is the uh, the symbol for it. So, and noting here when you put a not here, you can you can uh, do summations and whatnot and change the uh, the data table. So like in this particular case, I could have uh, 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 a on B off, but an I one on the output, and then I could have a one, uh, A on and B on and not have an output. So you can change the truth table by adding a not to that symbol, that signal. And as I mentioned before, they, when they combine a not and an and gate, you get to end up with a nand. And then what essentially what that is, you just end up with a little dot on the end. So that means that they've added an, a not. So when A and B are off. A and B are off. It means the output would be off, but it's flipped here, so that makes it on. So think of it that way. So it's the same thing, only flipped because of the zero. So, so I've got a zero one, which would be uh, off. Flipped would be on. Uh, one zero one zero off. Flipped but on. And then a one one, which would be on. Flipped would be off. Think of it that way. The same thing with a NOR gate. They put a NOT gate and an OR gate together, call it a NOR gate. Same principle applies. Uh, so when I got a OFF and OFF, so A is OFF, OR B is OFF, I have OFF, flipped is ON. Uh, a is OFF, B is ON, OFF, OR ON, is ON, flipped is OFF. And that's how you think of it. So, uh, so I got a on or off, which equals on, flipped is off. On and on, on or on, flipped is off. Then they go into X or gate. That's this is a real common one. This one is looking for two inputs that are different. If they're the same, the output doesn't turn on. So now look at the input table here. So zero, zero is off. So A is off, B is off, no output. A is off, B is on, output is on. A is on, B is off, we have an output. A is on, B is on, no output. So A and so. So again, looking, it's looking for a A being different than B and B being different than A. Boolean algebra, that's more of the digital side of things. I'm going to leave that to the uh, when you take your digital class. So we're going to kind of just bump through this kind of fast here. But you get the idea. Uh, uh, a times B or AB and some of these things. Uh, we don't usually get too in-depth in this sort of communication or this type of information in the PLC world. We stick to well, mostly just, uh, just the commands in the PLC. Okay, 
So I'm going to kind of pass through some of this, reduce simple equation for a given logic gate circuit. We have hardware logic versus program logic. So one of the points I want to share with you guys to be very, very clear, this circuit that we're looking at right now, it shows terminals, these little circles and dots and lines and all these fun things and uh, M's and G's and R's with lines through it and, and these symbols. All of this represents a hardwired motor control diagram. Hardwired is the key that I want, to, I want you to understand. Is when you see the format of a schematic in this format, I'm looking for a hardwired diagram. That means that it's not programmed this way. This is different than being a program format. Because I'm going to have opportunities for you to draw circuits and programs on a lab on a homework assignment and when you do so make sure you are very clear on whether it needs to be hardwired or programmed I, I, I throw that detail right in there I says this if this has to be show it how it would be in a program format and show it how it be in a hardwired format that's what I'm looking for so make sure you're following those those guidelines Okay, so here we are looking at that very same circuit, only what? In a program format. So this is, uh, you're showing contacts, right? We're not showing terminals, we're showing contacts. We've got the left rung, the right rung, and we're just showing contacts and addressing. So this is a, this is a big difference between hardwired and software. Here we got an illustration of how that program is going to be or, uh, operate in a PLC. Notice how the uh, when they make the input here one zero, this contact comes on and stays on because why this contact ors around that. So if this is on or that is on. It turns this on. When you hit the one two, it turns it off. It breaks that seal. Or if you hit the one one, it breaks it off. It turns off, breaks that seal. This is a really common circuit. You'll see it time and time again in PLCs. This is called the sealing circuit or a start stop circuit. Here we are, we're illustrating that again. So we got instructions branches, power rails, and a rung. So they're kind of illustrating the difference between ladder logic and relay schematic again. Here we are again for the two input switches versus the ladder logic program. Make sure you understand the difference between these, okay? You're going to be uh, asked to draw this at some point, and you have to be able to distinguish the difference. Notice here, when we turn on both of these switches, the output turns on. We turn off one of them, they both, the, the, the output turns off. Here we got the OR statement, right? So we've got a limit switch 1 or limit switch 2 can turn on here. To turn on the solenoid or limit switch one and limit, uh, limit switch two got looks like I overwritten a little bit here can turn on the output here. Let's take a look at that. Notice how one or the other can turn on that output. or both. So now you can see that they're moving us into a more advanced application where we got uh, uh, one input or another input and a third input. So here we've got one input or another input 
and another input in the, again the same thing only in ladder. The output does not turn on until what? We get this uh, that guy there on. Yeah, there we go. We turn him on now. Oh, turn it back off again. Ah, we got output on. Output is on now. Output is still on, and then stays on. Enter output is on at that point. Now they're going ahead and making it even a little more complicated. So now we have what? LS1 or LS2 and FS1 or FS2. So you got you got multiple paths you could follow here, right? We could go this way, we could go this way, we could go this way, we could go uh, this way. So there's there's multiple paths here that can be followed. Okay, now we're on to one other section here. So we got uh, this switch and this switch, or this switch could turn the horn on, or I have this switch. Again, the same thing, only in ladder diagram, a hardware and ladder. Let's take a look at how that's done. Okay, so now we've got uh, the uh, the horn is on, as you can see. We've got this switch and this switch is on, is also, and they also have, or this one would turn on. So either one of those conditions. So now we're moving into the next level. So we got limit switch one and limit switch two, or limit switch three and limit switch four. Take a look, see how. Okay, so now as you can see here, we got we got basically all four of those on, and we have the light on as well. We could have just these two or these these two. We got all four. Okay, so now we're looking at a uh, limit switch. We normally open limit switch. A normally closed push button. That's a symbol for a normally closed push button, and then the output solenoid. So what it means for us is that I'm looking for limit switch one to be on, push button two to be in the off state or uh, closed state like it is and uh, the illustration of that same thing in ladder. Let's take a look and see how that Now I turn, he turns I, I1 off. You see how he presses the button? It turns it off so that, that keeps it from Well, it removes power from the output when it's off. So here's another scenario you run into here. We've got um, uh, it's like A has uh, got a normally open and a normally closed. So A is this is a normally open switch. This is a normally closed switch. And B has got a normally closed switch and a normally open switch. So when you press the button, it opens this, closes that. When you push this button, it closes that and opens that. Let's see how that all works.
Notice how this address and this address are the same, only inverted uh, as well as this one. This address and this address matches. We got the uh, uh, examine if open and examine if close, examine if close and examine if open. Just notice that I flip flop those. Here we go into the next program here. Uh, so here they're looking at a seal in circuit again, that, that seal in or uh, start stop circuit, if you would. Uh, we've got a normally closed, a normally closed, a normally open or a normally open, and a, the seal in. So this output here is here. So when I make this one or this one, I'm gonna turn this guy on, which is gonna close this contact and allow power to continue to flow through here. Let's see how that operates in the uh, in the real world here. Okay, so he's got two, three. So right now he just closed one zero, he turned the output on, so he broke it there. Closed one zero, turns it on, breaks it here. One one, turns it on, brings this guy on, so it come, power's coming through here, falling through, and turning on this guy until you break this. Very common circuit. You'll see this many, many times. We will be working with this same circuit, something very similar to this, over and over again. Word level instruction. Uh, when you uh, uh, want to compare multiple bits in a word, uh, manipulate a lot of data at the same time, many, um, many bits at the same time, uh, you will uh, you'll, you'll deal with word manipulation. Um, we're going to be doing more and more of that in the future. We're just going to touch on it here a little bit. So when we're looking at word level, we're looking at the whole word. We're not looking at one of these bits. We're looking at the whole 16 bits or 32 bits if we're in, uh, dealing with the uh, uh, control logics. 5,000. But as you can see here, they're actually taking the whole word of this information here a whole word of this information here, adding the two together, and, and dumping them into a destination. So that's that's pretty much it. They, when you and, it's, it's nothing more than the, the truth table we already looked at. You take uh, uh, the bit by bit. So the first bit, uh, bit zero here, zero, and it was zero, is zero, right? Uh, so zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero is a zero. All these are zeros We're, until we get to a one, one condition. Ah, there it is. One with a one is a one. One ended with one is one. One ended with one is one. And one ended with one is one. So let's keep that in mind. That's that's exactly how you do it. That's that's all you do here. And if, it, uh, if we have an or statement, oh, oh here we go. We'll, do, we'll actually do this first thing. So first address is B35, this address here. They're ending it with B37, which is this address here. And they're placing the value of, the, of that and into this word here. So as you can see, if you follow along, there's only one there, one there. So it's all zero, 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 because there's only one. Zero, zero. One, one gives me a one. One, one gives me a one. Zero, zero. One, one gives me a one. One, one gives me a one. See how easy that is? It's just that easy. So now the or statement. Just like the and, only bit by one bit at a time. So zero or zero equals zero, right? So I got a one or zero equals a one. One or zero is a one. One or zero is a one. One or zero is a one. You can see all these ones. These are either one, one or one, zero, all the way to this point. And then I got two more ones there. So yeah, we're in good shape. That should work pretty good for us. So here in this case, we're looking at comparing these, these two words here and dumping the results here. So zero, zero, one, 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 one all the way to the end. So that's exactly how that works. 
All right, now XOR. You remember the XOR? That's when we're if we have two bits that are not the same, we end up with a one. So we got the zero one. It's a one. A one one is a zero. Zero 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 or one one. Excuse me, a zero. Zero 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 one one zero one. There we go. That's a one right there. So, and the rest are the same. So there will be no change. So we have only two one zeros. We got a one zero, a zero one here. And a zero one here to give me a one. So the only time that it's turning on an output is when he's got a one and a zero. So if you were to flip through here, you see a one one is off. A one zero should be on. 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 One zero should be on. One zero is on. One zero. And one. One zero, yeah. That's exactly how it works. Then or not, it's real simple. So if it's on, it turns it off. If it's off, it turns it on. So that's your destination. There. So you got B39 at the top, B310 below. As you can see, they're, uh, they're all inverted from one another. And that takes this information, goes top row, inverts it, and puts it in here. 